sentinel value. The sentinel value means the, the cutoff point or the stopping criteria. And the stopping criteria is based on the input or it is very dynamic that you cannot specify like what you did on the for loop or any other kind of loop. For example, this one, this is a very uh, sequence. So one and then two and then three and then four and then five and so on. But in this case, the problem becomes very dynamic. So whenever you put the zero and it will be, uh, if you put the negative value, then it will be stop. Okay. So let me just return back with this one. For example, if I want to put any number, okay, five, and then two, and then three, and then seven, six, eight, one, five, again six. So it will never stop until you put minus, then it stops. Okay. So this kind of information, this condition is the sentinel value. Okay. So the sentinel value can be an integer or a sentinel value can be string or a sentinel value can be character. Okay. So it can be anything. So the problem in Kuram, you are trying to solve the problem with the string, yes or no. Okay. Next is about Fibonacci. Have you heard about Fibonacci? Fibonacci is a series, okay? It is a number, a series of number. And the number is the sum of the two preceding ones. So for example, if I have zero, one, Okay, so the next number, the next number will be the addition of zero and one. So it will be one. And what is the next number? The next number will be the addition of one plus one. So it will be two. What is the next number? The next number will be the addition of the two digit before and the last digit is, and the result will be three. And what about the next number? The next number will be this one and this one. So the result will be oh, five. And what is the next number? Then the result will be three plus five. So the result will be eight. Okay. Based on this sequence, can we make the program? So I give you this information. Let's suppose I have three variable, A, B, and C. So the A and B will be the value for the first and the second, and then C will be the total. So every time I do this one, I need to do something like C will be A plus B. Okay. And then the new A will be the previous B, and the new B will be the previous C. Okay, so based on this sequence, we can say like the A equals to B, and then B equals to c okay and then we will keep looping this one until a uh, kind of input so if you want to find one two three four five six seven 
it nine. So if you want to show nine numbers, then it will stop until nine time. Okay. Let's see Fibonacci number to Java. Now this is a Fibonacci and we have the initial value F1 and F2. The F1 will start from zero and the F2 will start from one. Okay. Now you need to get the stopping criteria, which is the number of Fibonacci number. So please input N of Fibonacci number. So let's say I want to input five. Okay, then I will run from one until five. Okay. So five means five times or five numbers. And then I will do the pre, the first number, which is F2. Okay. So if you want to change this one, I mean you can change this one to the same one. Like this is A and this is B. Okay. So the idea is the same. And you want to print B. And then this is A. And then this is B. And then this is A. And this is B. And then this is P. Okay, and then you know next is the C. Okay. So the idea is the same with this one. Then you will do input and Fibonacci number. I have input five, then the result will be one, one, two, three, five. Okay. So this was the explanation. Okay. We have the A. The new A will be the old B. And the B will be from the old C. So we can get the new C. Okay. And then if we have the new one, the A will be again the old C. And then again, this B will be from the old C. And then we will get the C. After we finish this one, then we will go to the next again to check the A. A is from the B and then B is from the C. And then we can calculate C. Then we can have next, which is A plus B. And then A will be equal to B and then B will be equal to the next. Okay. And then do again until five times. And we will print for every number and we will print space. Okay. So the, that's all about this chapter. So we learned about the loops. At least we learned about the three statements. The while statement, the while statement, and then for loop. And I hope that you can try to adopt with this repetition in any kind of problems. So let's see the next problem. It is about finding the greatest common divisor. GCD, greatest common divisor. Let's say, okay, I have a problem, write a program so write a program that prompts the user to enter two positive integers, okay, two positive integers, and then find their greatest common divisor. So for example, for example, you input two integer four and two. So the greatest common divisor is two, because two can be divided by two, and then four can be divided with four, with two. Okay. Two cannot divide it by four. So that's why the greatest common divisor is two. And then if you input 16 and 24, okay, the greatest common divisor is eight. C 
16 can be divided by 8, 24 can be divided by 8, but there is no other number that can divide those two numbers. Uh, yeah, there is there is no other number that can divide 16 and 24 greater than 8. Okay. So if I need to input this number, okay, if I need to input this number, and then if I need to input this number, then how can we do to find the greatest common divisor? So you need to understand Sorry. So you need to assume that we have n1, we have n2. So those two numbers are the input. And we know that 1 is the common divisor. But it might be another number. Maybe it can be two, it can be three, it can be four, and so on. So as long as the number can be divided by that number, or we can say the remainder equals to zero, then yeah, we need to check whether any number greater than that number is okay or not. So let's see the example creators common divisor. Here we need to enter the first integer and then we need to enter the second integer. Now we assume that the first will be equals to one. And then I would like to find the K. Okay. So the k is the number that will be the divisor. Okay. And then the GCD will be the final result. So I assume that I start from 2 and the GCD will be 1 because every number can be divided by 1. So I will check 2 is less than n1. And 2 is less than N2. If this condition is true, so it means if both of the conditions are true, then we will do this one. If the N1 remainder K equals to 0, so it means the N1 can be divided with K. And the N 2 can be divided with k, then the GCD will be the k. And then k will be added by 1. So k will keep increasing if yeah, uh, we are still having the condition is true. And the last one, yeah, we need to print out the result. So if you try, enter the first integer, 16, and enter the second integer, which is 24, then the greatest common divisor is 8. Okay. Let's say I have another number, for example, I have 36, and then I have 24. Okay, the greatest common divisor is 12. Okay. So please try to understand this uh, code. Okay. The next will be about predicating the future tuition. What is this problem? Now suppose that the tuition fee for a university is ten thousand US dollar, and assume that the tuition increases seven percent every year. So this increase seven percent every year. So in how many years that the tuition will be doubled? So double means 
more than 20,000 US dollar. So we will keep looping until 20,000 US dollar. And then we want to know how many years of that one. So if it is greater than 20 US, 20,000 US dollar, then stop. And then get the year. So when the tuition is 10,000, it means the year equals to one. If we multiply with 1.07, which is 7%, then the year will be added by one. And then again, we will do the addition with another 1.07, and then year will be added by one. And then again, we will multiply with 1.07, and then again, year will be added by one. And so on until the tuition fee is greater than 20,000 US dollars. Okay. So let's see. Uh, we have the future tuition. So the tuition at the initial value is 10,000 or it is in the year zero. And let's make it as a year zero. Okay. While tuition is less than 20,000. So if the tuition is still less than 20,000, then do the multiplication with 1.07. And then we will add the year plus one, year plus one. Every time the tuition is still less than 20,000, we will do the statement. But when the tuition has been more than 20,000, we will stop. Okay. And then we will print about the year. And what is the tuition? Okay, now I will teach you another. Uh, what, what, what happened to them? Huh? I cannot see my cursor, my mouse. Okay. So here, the tuition will be doubled in how many years? And now we are using the print F. Do you still remember print F? Okay. We have the multiplication at the time. So in the multiplication, we use print F. So print F means we want to print something according to the format. So the format here is D, D is integer. But when we are using the future tuition here, we want to use F. What is F? F is the float okay, or double value. And I have this one dot two. Okay, what does it mean? So the tuition will be double in eleven years. So the tuition will be twenty one thousand forty eight point fifty two. Okay. So the dollar is the string. Okay. And the percent is the format. If you still remember, we use the percent. Okay. So the percent is to do the formatting. And here we have 1D. 1D means we just have only one space or we have one location for the numbers. If you put 2D, then you will have like two locations. If you put 3D, it means you have three locations. So you can see there is a space here. If you put 4D, then you have four space here. Okay. But for the float, we have dot two. It means I want to limit into two decimal. So if I put three, then I want to limit to three decimal. So if you still remember the problems in your Gurum, okay, when I, when you have that problem, you multiply with 100 and then divide with 100 
and then change the value from integer to the double. Okay, there is a short way. So if your value is double, then you want to show only in two numbers of decimal, then you can just put the 0 0.2, something like this one. So let's uh, see one example. Mm. Let's say double, I can put like pi equals to 3.145, I don't know, okay? Just random value like this one. And then I want to print pi. What is pi here? Then, yeah, all numbers will be printed. But I want to print only two digits. Yeah, last time you have the problems to change to the upper number. So it means you will multiply with 100. And after you multiply with 100, and then you will do with the division with 100. Okay. And you will change this one to the integer. And then you need to, yeah. And then after you do this one, you will change it to the double. Okay. Yeah, you can do this one. Okay, you, you can do this one. But yeah, the issue is, yeah, it's a little bit complex with this one. I can make it shorter with printf. Okay, with the printf, we can just use the printf dollar, oh, sorry, percent dot two f. Okay, and then comma, we call the variable, which is pi. Okay, and this percent should be in between the double quote. Then the result will be 3.15. Whoa. Because this is a function to round the value. Because we have one, four, five, seven, then it will be rounded up. Okay, so it becomes 3.15. Okay. Okay, that's all about this section. Any questions, comments? Then I will continue with the next section. Oh, something wrong with the mouse. I'm not sure what is the wrong. Okay, I will go to this section, which is about methods. Okay. I give you the PowerPoint and then there is one zip file, which is about the source code for the methods. Okay. So you can put those two in your folder. In my case, I put it into this folder. And then you can extract the zip file. What is the abjuk pulgi? Okay. So you can extract these files in one folder. And then I put this on the section 05. So you can create a new package okay so in your eclipse you can create a new package in this case i put the package name is section 05 so this is section 05 so once you have the section 05 here you can copy all the files here, okay? Control C, and then just paste here. So all the files will be located in your Eclipse. Okay, so I, I give you some seconds to do this one.
So you I will open the chapter about the method, yeah. So we are going to learn about static methods and there are two kinds of methods. The first is method without written values, okay. method without written values and the methods with written values. And then at the end, we will learn about the local variables. The methods without written variables, we call it void. So you know the main method. The main method always have void because there is no written value. Okay, so we will check. The static method means it is a method to collect many statements. Okay. And those many statements are grouped together to perform an operation. So you know how to do with the uh, uh, condition. You know how to do with the repetition. Now you can create a method and put all those statements in one method. Until now, you learn only one method, which is the main method. We need to understand about the method and at this chapter, we will learn about static method. The static method means it is a statement, uh, sorry, it is a group of statement in the static class. I will define to you about the static class. This is a class, okay? And I have the class name is testing. And this is the main method. And this is a static point. So it means this is a method without any written value. And this is always uh, do the statement. And whatever is the statement inside this one, yeah, you just do it or you just execute it. This will be a good structure for your program. So if you have a complex uh, statement, you can put in the method. And it will eliminate the redundancy by code reuse. So if you want to do one more thing or if you want to do more uh, problems with the similar concept, then you can use method. The procedural decomposition, it means we can divide the problem into methods. So if you do the team project, maybe the project will be very huge. Okay, so there will be a kind of uh, sales. So maybe you will check also about the inventory or you want to also check about the customer. So you need to build different class. You can build the class for customer. You can build the class for product. You can build the class for the sales. Yeah. So it means yeah, you can split the problem into sub problem or smaller problem. The static method is like adding a new comment to Java. So that Way to build the static method, there are at least three. Okay. First, you need to think about the algorithm. Maybe it's not the algorithm class, but you need to design what kind of statement that might be repeated. If there is a repetition with that statement, okay, then it might be a good method. And then after you already know what is the method you can declare okay you can write the method 
So you can assign some statements into the groups and then give that collection of statements a name. And then lastly is to call the method. So the main method will execute the other method. Okay. Okay, let's see one example. I can create a new method with the same format public static void. Okay. Public static void. When you have your first program, you will always have min. Okay. You will always have min. Min function means it is the method that you will execute for the first time. You can design another method. The name, it can be anything. And then inside the method, you need to yeah, provide some statement. So if it is a method, you need to put the parenthesis, brackets. Okay. So for example, I have public static void, and then the method name is customer name. And then I put the bracket, and then I give the curly bracket, which is the starting of this method, and then the another curly bracket to stop the method, or this is the ending of the method. Inside the customer name method, there will be three statements. The first is to write Mr. Park, and then the second is to write from Korea, and then the third one is just go to the next line. When you execute the method, you can just call the name. So if you just call the name, yeah, any name that you define for that method, for example, you call, you write the name as customer name. Then in Java, you can just call customer name with parentheses and then with the uh, semicolon. Okay. And then after you put this in one of the statement in the main method, you will see the output, Mr. Park from Korea. So let's see this one. We have method trial. Okay, there's one example, method trial. So until now, you already understand the sequence of the Java, okay, the sequence of the programming language will be from the top and go down, go down, go down, go down, and go down until the end. So in this case, I would like to start from the first. So it will print here customer. And then customer name. What does it mean? Oh, this is a method. And you will call this method. It means we will go to this section. And then it will print Mr. Park from Korea and go to the next line. After we finish this one, we will return back to this one. So we will go to the next line again. And then welcome to USA. And then enjoy your trip. And then, oh, again. We go to the customer name. So they, in the customer name, we will print again Mr. Park and we will print again from Korea and then go to the next line. So that's the step. We will start from the main method. Okay. Now you can see here are customer the first and then because we call the customer name method 
This is the method with the public static point. So we call this is the static method. Okay. We call this is static method because we have the static. Okay. We will learn about non-static method in the lecture after the mid exam. Okay. For now, we will learn only the static method. And after we print the Mr. Park from Korea, we go to the next line. And then again, we go to the next line. So it means here, welcome to USA is printed. And then enjoy your trip is printed. And then again, we call the customer name and the customer name is Mr. Park from Korea. Okay. There is another thing that we need to understand that the method can be many. Okay. And you can call the methods inside the method. Let's say I have the methods call method. So method call method. I have the main method. Okay. So this is the first method that will be executed. When you run your Java, it will go to the main method for the first. And then let's check. Okay, we will go to message one. So the message one will be called. We go here and this is message one. After we finish, we go back to here and then we go to the next line, which is message two. In the message two, we print this is message two. And then, oh, we have message one. We call the method. So it goes here back to the message one method and then print message one. After we finish this one, because the calling method is from here, then we return back to here. And then we print done with message two. And then go back here, and then we say done with min. So if you run, so this is the message one, and then it goes to the this is message two, and then again this is message one because we call the message one, and then done with message two, and then done with min. So we can call another method from a method. So if I can explain with the diagram. So this is the diagram. We want to call the message one. After we call the message one, oh, what happened? I don't know what happened with my computer. So we call the message one and then go back. And then we go to the message two. And in the message two, we print the message two. And then there is one method, message one. So we go back to the message one to print the message one and then written back in the message two and then print done with message two. Okay. When to use methods. If the statements are related structurally. So if you know the structure of the statement and it should be in the structure or the statements are repeated. So we will see later some examples. If the methods or if you need to repeat the statements one more time, then just use method. You should not create static methods for this purpose. If you just want to print, if you, oh, 
what happened? Mm -hmm. Oh, hello, hello. Hmm. Something wrong with my mouse. I cannot run this mouse. Mm. Wait a moment. Hmm. Hmm. So stress. <laughs> Uh, I don't Mm. Why suddenly the mouse is not working? Hmm? Oh, okay. Oh, I don't know. So strange. Why he suddenly turn off all the materials? Okay, anyway. Yeah, if it is only a one line statement like print line, okay, you don't need to use the static method. Okay? Or if you want to print blank line. Okay. Blank lines means you have a print line statement. Then you need not to put the static method. Or if there is no related statement. Okay. So you don't need to make the static method. So the method actually it is a kind of uh, signature. Okay. You know signature. So the signature means uh, you need to have the method name and you need to have the parameter. Okay. So parameter, or we call it argument, is a value that you will pass to the method. And the parameter should be defined according to the data types. So let's see one example about the parameters. Oh, what's the name? Test void method. Test void method. Okay, now I have a static void main method. And then I have one method, print grid. Okay. And I have one value. Here, the value is 78.5. What is the meaning? This value is this one. This is the print create method. And then this is the print create method. And in the print create method, I define one parameter or one argument. And it should have a double value. So inside of the parenthesis, I have a double value, and the double value now is 78.5, okay? And after I know that it is a double value, and the value will be in the variable name score. So I will check, 
if the score is less than zero or the score is higher than 100, then it is invalid. If not, then do checking. I guess you know already about this one. If the score is greater than 90, then you will get A. If the score is greater than 80 and less than 90, it is B. If the score is less than 80 and greater than 70, it is C, and so on. Until if there is the score lower than 60, it is F. Okay. So this is what we call as the method signature. This is with one parameter. Okay, I guess, uh, yeah, it's a time to finish. So I will explain more about this method signature on Monday, okay? So please don't forget that on Monday, we will have a quiz and I will check with uh, Gurum and we will discuss about the Gurum on Monday.